Okay, welcome folks. This is our uh, lecture for Design 300. It's week 10, Tuesday, October 26, and we're a little bit early today. I have another meeting later on, so we're starting at 9 o'clock. So welcome in to everybody who's on the Google Meet. Um, this week, we're going to start our last building system. We've been working from the ground up. Uh, literally from the ground up, we started with soils and site work and what goes underground and then compaction and then and then we started working with concrete and the building pad and the foundation. Uh, we've just done the walls, the doors and the windows, which are called the building envelope. Of course, we've simplified that a little bit. And now we're going to work on the roofing systems. And this will be two weeks. This week, we're going to talk about beams, joists, and rafters, kind of the structure or the frame, the bones of the roofing system. And next week, we'll talk about the actual exterior finish of the roofing system. So that'll be two weeks worth. Let's take a look and see what's coming up, the sheathing and the finish. Um, after that, we talked about energy analysis, and it's really... Um, important when you're selecting your materials to select them with energy in mind and it's not nearly as easy as you would think. Uh, it's so dependent on your weather patterns and the use of the building and what's uh, around the building that energy analysis is very complex but we have some excellent tools to give us good ideas as to whether our choices are going to be good or not. So we'll spend a week on energy analysis. Then we'll talk about sustainability. And again, sustainability uh, sounds uh, like a good idea. It is a good idea, but it's not easy. What you might think is sustainable may not be. And as things go together, so again, you need some tools to analyze it so you can select your materials well. And then finally, we'll, we'll end up talking about damage. So in our selection of materials, we have to be cognizant of the possibility of damage through the life or even during construction um, of the project. And that becomes water, fire, and pest. So those, those, that's how we're going to finish out our review of material resources for uh, constructing a building. And then we'll just spend some time doing review and putting our final portfolio together. So let's get back to what this week is, roofing, and in particular the beams, the joists, and the rafters. So um, here we go. Uh, we're going to use Revit again. You're getting a good um, sort of introduction to the annotation side of Revit and getting your hands on it. It's so important in the building trade to use a program like Revit or Chief Architect or uh, one of the other. Uh, Bentley uh, makes one. Revit is the big dog. And so getting your hands on it and just getting introduced to it early is really important. We have our labs here. Of course, we're doing this at 9 o'clock today because I have a conflict at 10. And so um, uh, the recordings will be put up. There is a YouTube playlist and there's this excellent, excellent um, little thing about trusses. And it's 17 minutes long by... Eight minutes, it's starting to get into stuff that you really don't need to know about. Um, but it's good to know what a truss actually is. And they do make one statement in there that it's not a truss unless all the loads are located at points. Well, um, we actually use them a little bit differently. It's a truss, but when we analyze it, we take our distributed load and count it as being at a point. So you should just know that um, that uh, even though we don't 
formally go by the classic definition of a truss. When we talk about roofing members, they're either rafters or trusses. Even though the loading is not exactly like what they say in this video. Uh, but this is an excellent, excellent explanation. I really like it. And you can stop after about 9 or 10 minutes if you want. Although, if you groove on it like I do, like, like I love these equations because they're things that I can do and I know about them and they're not calculus. Um, and so I loved this stuff. If you enjoy arithmetic computation and application of math you'll really love this one otherwise stop after about nine minutes um let me come back over here uh, my appointment calendar we do have a resource folder for you and we're going to mostly talk about one of the most common trusses it's called a fink truss and it just looks like this. And you can see it's made out of triangles. Triangles keep their shape when you push on them sideways. Rectangles are more likely to lose their shape when you push on them sideways. So most trusses are made out, all trusses are made out of combinations of triangles. And this is just a really, really common one used in roofing structures you'll have a chance to look at other ones also this is certainly not the only one it's just really common especially in a hip roof residential truss you a hip roof means that there's a ridge and that the ends also angle down if this went over the entire building it would be called a gable if it's flat on the end and if it tapers down on the ends, it's called a hip. So anyway, we've got um, a, a truss drawing. We have a Revit uh, drawing that you'll get to work with. We've got our roofing system, um, uh, just reading sheet, and we have another spreadsheet. So I hope by now you're sort of getting the hang of it. We've been living in the Revit world and living in the spreadsheet world and in these uh, sort of reading list world and hopefully by now you're a little bit used to those so it says no discussion posting this week although your collaboration exercise is done on the discussion board so let's take a look at that really quick and i this is a little bit so the the instructions are sort of on the collaboration but you're also going to work in this file and you're going to work in your Revit file. They're all kind of put together and here's your collaboration. So you'll open the trust spreadsheet. Here it is over here. And you're going to pick a row. Let's say I pick this row because it's not done yet. Turn it light orange. So there's light orange. And put your name over here. If it doesn't fit, you can do this little text wrapping button. That's um, it's on this top bar here. It's next to the A, and you can always do text wrapping if it doesn't fit. That means you've selected that row and it's taken. And so if somebody else comes in here, they can get a different one. Okay, and I know that I've got a building span of twenty-five feet. It's forty feet long, and I've got a two by six. Okay, and so now I need to go and, and figure out all this stuff. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, but once you've done that, you'll go ahead and go to the Revit file, open it up, and there's a detail view in there. And you'll need to scale the detail view. I'll, I'll demonstrate that today. Um, uh, to get it the right size, trace the lines, erase the image, and then you can measure how much lumber is needed. And after you've measured how much lumber it's needed, you can figure out the cost for each truss. 
And then you can figure out how many trusses there will be if you have one every 24 inches. And I know I've got the estimated by, but the name over here, but they were kind of in the wrong order. Okay, then you can put your name in here again. Okay, so, oops, here we go. So that's, that's what's going to go on on this one. Okay, and so there's nothing really to put in here. You can tell I'm, a, I'm an old-time cartoon person, right? Electric powers combined. All of you together will help do this. And, and later on, uh, if you're interested, you can just review this and start looking at costs and saying, okay, I got it, 24 on center. And you're just getting ideas of how much stuff costs. If you wanted to, of course, you could do other um, trust types and you could do other centers so that you can have a reasonable, a reasonable assessment of costs here in a library. That's not required. Okay, so uh, you do have a submittal template to do, and you've got your submittal. So let's take a look at the submittal template There's really briefly. Again, you're getting good at this. Notice it's, this is now worth one point because I figure you've, you've got it down and you're learning how to do it well. Um, I'm seeing some really nice work on this. And, and remember, this is the type of thing that is really, really good when you're trying to um, let somebody know that you're organized and that you can do good presentations. So you want to do that when, for example, you're applying for a job or if you're making a presentation to get work in the gig work area. So we've got the roofing system, what it is, uh, terminology and engineering data, roof styles and terminology, trusses. Now, even though you're going to do all that work in your collaboration, your work on your trusses goes here. Okay, so all the kind of stuff that you do kind of goes in here. And then your Revit goes here. Okay, so it all kind of, this one isn't a nice super tight package. You're doing little parts of it all over the place and reporting it all over the place. All right, so that's what's going to be due. So that's what we've, that's what we've got for for this okay so let me go ahead i'm gonna go uh start up my my revit so here we go vmware on to it as you know it takes just a few moments and i think i've got it downloaded already but i'm not sure and I'm going to just, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the Revit part because I think it'll make a lot more sense for you as you're seeing that. See how it, it will work. Take just a moment to come up. Of course, it would have been good if I was prepared and had this up already, but it doesn't hurt for you guys to see that I go through exactly what you go through to get going each morning and to have stuff up and running. Um, so I'm I'm fully understanding of of what our student body has to go through to access the technology that we're that we're asking you to to use. So this is coming up. It'll be up in just a moment. And it is Autodesk, it's Revit 2022, so if you have an earlier version, you're going to have to do it on VMware. So I'll go ahead and open it. I'm pretty sure I've downloaded that file somewhere. If not, I'll go get it. There it is. Here's my roof crust detail drawing. And in this case, you have 
just a detail in here. There's not much else. Here's a detail that's already in there. You can see it's a pink roof truss, and it's all set up. And let's see what size I was going to do. I'm going to do 25 foot. So somehow I want that from there to there to be 25 feet. So if I click on the image, it tells me that total image is 29 feet. I think when it comes, you know, that's how you're going to get it, I think. But let's say it was um, 20 feet. And then when I click on it and measure from one point to another, I see that's only 17 feet across. Do you see how that's 17 feet? could also do it with a dimension, but it's easier to do it with the measure. So I could do some really good calculation to find some ratios, but I'm going to guess that um, if I put this at 25, it's going to be a little bit short. That's just 22. So without using, let me go 27. So you can do what I call the newton raphson method, which is successive estimates to get exactly where you want to go. I'm getting closer and closer every time. You can also call the newton raphson method guess and by golly. Guess, and by golly, I got it right. So I'm at 24 now. And so I see I'm going up kind of a nice amount each time. So I think if I put 29 in here, I'll be right on it. So that's what you're going to do. And you're going to take it really kind of right from this corner to the corner. And I've got it at 25. It's just a little bit too big, but it's okay. I'm just doing a material estimate. It's a detailed drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect. So once I've got that, I can go to my annotate and just start drawing lines. There's a line. There's a line. There's a line. Do it again. Sometimes I get lost on where my lines are. Now I'll just, I'll do the best I can on these. It's hard to tell. Sometimes I'm not positive I have my line there. There's also, for those of you who know how to do some of these things, there's the um, there's the mirror command that I could use also. And once I think I've got it drawn, I can I can delete. And I got most of it. You can see I I missed some of my lines here. I can put them in. Now I can measure these at 16 feet 10 inches. If I want to do a rough estimate, I can just make that 17 feet. And if I if I want to, I can um, gonna make this a little bit smaller here.
turn on my calculator and I can just figure out how much Come on, calculator, come over here for me. Yep. So I've got 17 plus 17, right? If I click on that, I'll call it 17. So over here, 17 plus 17. So I've got two of them, one, two. This one is nine feet. Oh, and 7.5. And there were two of them. That one's 6. And there's two of them. That one's, I'll call it 4. And there's two of them. And then I've got this one. And that's 13. So I've got about 100 feet per truss. 100 feet. So what's that going to be? This is going to equal... 100 feet divided by 8. I need 12 and a half boards. So I'll make it 13, and I'm just doing a rough estimate. So that equals 13 times. And then i got to come over here and remember how much one of those cost. Remember my resource sheet? Oh, here I am back. Studs. Studs were, I'm going to call it $9 each. So this is going to cost, it's going to equal 13 times 9. It's going to cost $117. Now I have to think of how many of them they're going to be. Uh-oh. I got some got some thinking to do here. Well, if there's one every 40 feet, there's either going to be 40 or 41. This is if I start at the very beginning and then start counting, my first one is 0. Then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, let's do this. So if I go one, two, three, four, I get one, two, three, four, five trusses, because I need a truss at each end. So if I'm 40 feet long, I need 41 of them. That's going to equal... 41 times however much each trust cost. Wow, $5,000 for the materials for this thing. Now, 24 on center is pretty tight for trusses. That's, that's a lot of trusses. Okay, so just so you know. Okay. Um, but I'm just, I'm just doing some estimating. So I'm going to say that this was estimated by me and it was added today so what is today um today is 10 26 21 isn't that cool that it comes up as a calendar now i need an image oh no so there's my image and if I want to, I can put a dimension 
here to here, I think. Let's see. See if I can do that. I might, I think I need to draw a tiny little line right here. And a tiny little line right here. And then it'll, then it'll get me that dimension a little easier. And see, uh, oh, it's so tiny. So don't worry about that. I'll just put that image in. That's my pink roof. So how do I get an image? I save. I click. And if this part is hard, that's okay. It's not worth everything. And then I have to save it. I have to save it as something. Pink. Press. This is the cool thing about these spreadsheets now. If I go to my image and I go insert an image into the cell, I can browse for it. There's my pink truss open. There it is. It's in there. That's not the greatest image, but it shows what it looks like. So that's really the the whole collaboration exercise. So now, there's a few things that you can do if you choose to. Um, let me come back over here. Okay, so now how am I going to get this onto there? I've already got my image saved. So when I come to over here, I can put it in here. And and I want to do I want to do a little bit of little bit of information work on it, right? So there there's my drawing of what I got. But let me put some let me put some stuff in here. Let me just let people know what I'm talking about is 117 feet of lumber. And you could call that linear. So regardless of the size of the lumber, you're going to use 117 feet. And you can call it a pink truss. And that looks a little ugly, so let's go ahead and do some work like that. And maybe even color it just slightly different. Okay, and then if you really want to show that you're understanding stuff, you can, you can, you know, this is the chord, and this is the this, and this is the that. It would be nice if you want to go ahead and actually annotate it. So that was a 25-foot span. What was this length? That was um, 17. And you can rotate this. And so take some time to really, really do your best with this to make it a really nice presentation. That's getting close. Bring that in. Center it up. Change that color back. Okay, so you can you can do some of that 
that work to show that you've um, that you've measured this out and you know what it is. Okay, if this is just too big now, you can always make that smaller so that this does a little bit better fit in your area. See if I can get that right. There we go. So take a little bit of time to make sure that you know what these are, you've identified what the parts are, and things like that. Okay? So that's how you do this one. It, it's Revit, again, it's fairly simplistic because I've given you the drafting view with the Fink Truss. If you're um, really interested in construction and materials and getting some comparisons, it's just good to put in some other trusses if you feel like it, and, and then you can compare how much lumber each type of truss uses, and then you can go online to find truss calculators to find out the loads, and you can do comparisons. That's what, that's what a takeoff designer or an architect would do. They would use the most effective, efficient truss possible to use as little material as possible, to get a, the, the most appropriate load characteristics. What's number one is safety. Number two is safety. Number three is safety. And then after that, you start looking at sustainability and cost and maintenance and things like that. Okay. So that's some, that, that's some work that you can do. Now I'm going to close this without saving it. You should save yours. I'm going to close mine without saving it so I can come back and do this demo again later on at another time if I feel like it. So I'm going to say no. Close that out. Okay, so um, that's how you do this one. I've seen some people doing some nice work with the different background colors. If you there's There's no real need to do that. You can always leave it as transparent. Um, but it looks it looks kind of nice in this case to, to have that. All right, and so obviously you're going to do more work than what I've just shown. But that's the type of thing that you might do. All right, so that takes care of, really of a lot of the kind of work work this week. You've got... This from last time where you can get your costs for lumber. Now these were two by fours. If you want to uh, go back and get two by sixes, uh, that would be a good idea. But but it, even if you just use these costs, they're very, very similar. And this is just an estimator. You've seen that if it's four feet long, you have one, two, three, four, five trusses. Okay, or four modules long. Okay, so you're going to take your building length plus one times the cost per truss. And you'll lay this out to, to make it orange to know that we've, we've actually done that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at roofing systems now just in general. We just talked about a truss, but when we talk about roofing systems, there's two types of roofing systems. There's what's called rafter and joist, and then there's truss. Now, there are other roofing systems, but these are super, super, super common. Now, a rafter and joist, you see that there's something that creates the shape of the roof. And those are rafters. They, they create the slope of the roof. The slope is usually some common one that people know how to build and know the structure of. There's 6 on 10, 6 on 6, 12 on 12, 
there's some common roof slopes. And so these rafters, there's usually a big ridge board that's put up and supported on some of the beams that go across. And then these rafters just lay against it and lay on the top plate. And sometimes they've got a notch, as you see here, and sometimes they don't. You can see that when you push down on that, it's really held in place. But if you push down hard on this angled thing, these walls are going to want to spread outward. So you have a joist to help hold the walls together. Now, sometimes there are far more joists than there are rafters. Because the joists are also used for nailing points for your ceiling. And the ceiling might be sheet board, it might be panel board, it might be plank, it, there's all sorts of things that see it might, could be a drop ceiling. Um, but something has to keep these walls from spreading apart when you push down on this whole thing. And that's a joist. Joists sit on top of either walls or sometimes this is too far apart for a joist to be able to handle it all by itself. And so you put in a beam running down, down the length of the building. So beams run the length of the building and joists go crosswise. And joists keep the walls from spreading apart. And they provide places to nail or a screw or attach the ceiling to. Rafters basically hold the finished material at the proper angle. And so on top of the rafters, you put these things called battens that just run down the length. And that's what you screw your sheath or nail your sheathing to and then you put down your coating vapor coating and then you put down your actual roofing um, material and purlins kind of do the same thing but battens really aren't very strong and they don't do much so the purlins run down the length and they keep the rafters upright and spaced properly. That's what the that's what the purlins do. So those are some of the things that you can know about rafter and joist construction. And these are usually put on as you go. So the frame the roofer will lay in a bunch of joists and then they'll lay in the rafters and the joists might be 16 inch on center or 24 inch on center depending on if it's standard framing or advanced framing and the rafters might be different could be could be uh 24 or 36 or 48 it depends on the structural calculations for the roof and you should know that some roofs weigh very little and some weigh a lot. And so when you have a roof redone, you either have to make it pretty much the same style or you have to recalculate your roof. So as an example, if you had um, asphalt shingles, which are very, very light, and you decide you want a beautiful tile roof that weighs about 15 to 20 times as much per square foot you can imagine that the whoever designed the rafters might not have put in enough for um for the tile and if you put in solar panels your lift loads increase as do your dead loads going down and so you may need some extra supports under your extra rafters in to be put in underneath your um solar panels so these calculations this looks like it's like they're attached 
But there's nothing that says this joist is attached to this rafter. This joist might be 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches, 8 inches farther into the drawing, into the, into the page as the rafter. Okay, so then we talk about trusses, and trusses are usually prefabricated. They're often using these plates, and I had quite an experience with these plates when I was working a, a job with the City of San Francisco Fire Department. I was actually the backflow preventer guy, and um, they were uh, checking out our backflow preventers to use on their on their fire trucks, and I got to see them go to some training things just to check and see how it would work. And they would literally build buildings with different types of these striker plates, or um, not striker plates, but the, but the truss plates. And uh, they would set the roof on fire, and then they would see how our equipment work and how these work. And I'll tell you, these things would just pop right out as soon as the as soon as the thing got a little hot, bink, they would just pop right off and these trusses would fall. So the city of San Francisco at that time was writing a new spec and they require all of these truss plates to be bolted through in at least one place on each member so they don't just pop off when they get hot. And you can imagine, you know, a fireman does not want to go into a building where the roof might collapse very quickly just because it got hot. And they were one of the first places where I got introduced to GIS, Geographic Information Systems. They knew the construction of every building in San Francisco. And they had, they you know, when when they had a call, they'd see whether they could go into the building or not whether it had PVC, whether it had these types of plates. So the fire department, safety, safety, safety. Uh, firemen are not expected to put their life at risk for uh, your poorly made building. Uh, and, and look, um, when these things first came out, these little, these little plates, nobody thought they were poorly made. They thought they were really cool. It took experience. And you should know, safety codes are almost always based on experience and usually an experience that you don't want to happen again. So um, anyway, so these little striker plates, these are all put together. And you can see this one's not a fink. Uh, this one's not a fink, but they're, they're being used and this is not a residential building. But these are pretty... They're very, very standardized. You know exactly how they're going to work. They're built in very good conditions so that you know that they were put together in a very specific way, in a very specific environment. So you can really rely on the numbers, the design numbers for these trusses, which is why they're becoming more popular and more useful than... Uh, rafter and joist okay so that was really what this uh, you know i just went i just went through what all this says but but my expectation is that you'll click on some of these you know here's the roof shapes there it is right there oh how cool is that if you click on it you get to you know there's flat single pitch gable hip all these kind of and there's a great picture Single pitch, gable. This is what I was saying. Uh, the gable, and that's what we're doing in our little design. And then a hip is a gable where you angle the end. Okay, there's gambrel. It kind of looks like a barn. These aren't the these aren't really uh, used in our part of the. Uh, country too much for residential, but they're really cool. You can put windows along up here. A gablet roof with a Dutch gable. That's really cool. Can't you? So these are all kind of <coughs> very common roofs, and here's some more. 
Um, some of these really aren't, aren't, you know, butterfly roof. Oh my gosh. You can imagine their drainage problems there. Um, but, but really around here, we find gable and we find hip as the primary ones. Although sometimes you see these. So that's sort of what's really common around here for residences, for single family residences. Now you'll see these a lot more on multifamily houses. So just this this one is chock full of good stuff. Detached houses, shapes, framing. Here's your timber. There's a lot of the cool materials that we'll look at um next week we'll we'll take a look at these next week slate i bet you there's a picture down here there they are you know this isn't that great uh, but there's there's a lot more this one's got a lot of cool 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 stuff on it right here and i'm gonna suspect that you'll put you'll go look at these and get a lot of good information again I am expecting you to avoid just putting these on because I've already done that and that you'll find your own examples. Okay? So, this is what I'm talking about, beams and joists. If your joists can't go across the whole building, uh, somewhere they'll put a beam up across the, the, across the building and your joists can rest on the beam. So joists all have um, uh, maximum spans depending on the size. And look at that. You can see the, the wood stamp on some of these, right? Inspectors, you're not allowed to put the, the, the ceiling up um, until the inspector has gone in and taken a look at these and seen that they're all stamped and that they're the proper material. And that they're all restrained, constrained properly, and and put in properly. So this is flooring above, and the ceiling will go on here, unless it's going to be open like this. But this is really nice. There's the beam. The beam goes across the building, and it's usually larger. And this one looks like it's what's called a glue lamb. It's laminated. It's plywood all put together. So they're thin sheets that are all crossed one after the other. They're extremely strong. Um, we know exactly what they'll do in a fire. They tend to remain straight if they started out straight. And they're an engineered material. They know exactly how many knots there are per square foot. You know exactly what load it can take. So these glue lambs are uh, really, really popular. And they can be made from smaller trees. So old growth, you, you have an opportunity if the um, lumber company is really sort of thinking about the environment. When they plant, they'll have a plan that X number of trees will grow for 40, 60, 100 years. Other ones will grow 20, 30, 50 years. And others will grow, you know, 10 to 15 years. And they'll just um, cycle their area. And glue lambs can be made from some of the younger material. So there we go. That's a, a joist and a beam. So it's really important to kind of know which ones are which. Here's a bunch of, in of information about them. So it tells you what a beam is, and it tells you what a joist is. Here's some different styles of roof and some of their terminology. And here's a very cool ro roofing calculator that you can go to where you can type some stuff in and, um, and get some information out of it. Not sure where the where the calculation comes in. Um, I think you just have to start putting stuff in. Um, and then stuff 
stuff sort of just happens where you start getting information. Calculate. I'm not sure where the calculator actually is on here now. Where's the calculator? Stair calc uh floor joist span calculator. Uh, well, I'm not sure where the calculate actually is. But it lets you know all of the stuff that's involved with it. And here's those types of roofs again. And this one's a little bit more in the order that we see them. Uh, gable, hip. Dormers are, are um, fairly common. Let me zoom on this. A dormer is where you get a little piece sticking out sideways to it. Okay, and and it gives you headroom out there, right? Where you can have a little window out there to get some headroom. So it's you should just be looking this over and look, here's where you're gonna get some of those, right? You got your you got your rafter, your run, your angle, your slope is rise divided by run. Kind of cool. Shows you something about something about, and they call this overhang or the eave. Here's some more good information. The rake. There's a gable. A soffit is a flat spot underneath. The fascia is the facing. Flashing. We talked about that already. That keeps the water from from seeping in. We'll talk about some of this later on. Uh, in other ones, but here's types of rafters that you can review also. So this one just, you know, they've got the common rafters. They've got hip jack, which are shortened as you go out the hip. Um, cripple jacks are ones that go from the main ridge down to the valley. And then dormer rafters. So those are common rafters are the easiest, but that's that you don't you don't get a lot of those. <laughs> you certainly don't get a lot of those on a on a complex building. And finally, what you'll see this is where you get a lot of the information that you can put on your other one. And this one is a fink. Um. Pretty much. I'm not positive this one's actually a fink because it doesn't have the piece down the middle, but it's pretty close. And, you know, there's a splice, there's joints, there's top cord, there's bottom cord, there's webs, there's the apex, there's the heel. Clear span, how much room inside, and nominal span is to the outside of the support. Okay, and here's a whole bunch of these ones again. So, where's there's the fink. This one is a fink. Okay. Um, so there. That's what we've got. That's your, that's your stuff for the basics of this week. Now, on um, Thursday, I'm going to review again the... Press calculations and the Revit. So it'll be a little bit shortened down because uh, it won't take too long. But I'll go into those a little bit more detail and um, make sure that you really understand those ones. Okay, there we go. There's no questions. I'll go ahead and stop the recording and see you on. Thursday.